I'm going to give you a, a quick run through of the menus because they are rather simple to use. And by hitting the menu button, I'm going to go in here. And the first menu is the IQ menu, which kind of is, stands for image quality. And as you're going through here, first thing I have is my image size set up. And you can see if I move over to the right, I have 3 by 2, 16, 19, 1, 1, 3, 2, 16, 19. Um, and this is basically in large and uh, medium and um, small as far as um, catching those in, in JPEG mode. I have image quality. I'm shooting image quality as fine and raw at this point. And you'll see here where you can see the menu where it's fine. You can just have normal and fine. These are JPEG only. Uh, normal and raw and of course just raw alone. So I'm doing raw and fine. And I do that also because with the film mode you'll see in a second, film simulation mode, I can uh, do uh, a preview of things. So next thing is raw recording and we're going to do essentially lossless compressed or uncompressed. I'm going to go select the uh, uncompressed. Film simulation. Now we all know that Fuji makes good film simulations and I have it set for Velvia and you have Astra Classic Chrome which is just gorgeous to work with. Pro negative, pro negative standard, classic negative, and a Eterno. Oh, this is so good. It's Eterno Cinema. Now, this is the one I use a lot. This is like the most gorgeous black and white. So right now, this is Acros filter black and white, and you can select the black and white filters. Uh, here's green, here's red, here's yellow, and here's standard. Uh, I use the red one a lot when I have dark, deep blue skies, and I get these just gorgeous black skies. You can do monochromatic color, grain effects, color chrome effects, and of course these have to be turned on or off since strong and weak, um, and color chrome. So let's go back through here. Now we have autofocus is our next autofocus, manual focus. Uh, we have a steam whistle around the corner, so we'll just put up with it. It's part of the environment of Indy. It's not a fire truck, it's a steam whistle. Focus area. Focus area allows us to decide whether we want to use all the points. I can use the knob here to go back in and out to focus size. I have AF mode, single, zone, wide uh, with tracking and then all. And of course, if I use all and I go into the focus area, you can see all the different points that there are for focus and it'll take advantage of all those. Autofocus continuous custom settings. We have a number of these that we can use which allow us to, to determine what kind of continuous autofocus we want. I usually keep it on two, which is continue to track subject uh, ignore obstacles. So there's a whole slew of those and you can also customize them uh, to your liking here too. This is a beautiful thing. It works well. Store AF mode by orientation. I have it off but you can turn it on. Show AF point displays on. Pre-AF is off. It actually is good to turn that on because it's actually got a head start on pre-focusing when you bring it up to your eye. Autofocus illuminator I leave off because I don't want to use that if I don't have to. Now you see up here we have two of three. So this shows us two of the three menus. We're now on to face detection. There's a great autofocus uh, and face detection system on the uh, Fuji and they've gotten very good over the last year or so. And on this camera it has all the same settings pretty much as the X-Pro3 has. So I can go in here and I have face detection on, move over to the right one more time and I have eye detection off, eye auto on, so it'll look for an eye and, and catch the eye. I could do right eye or left eye priority. So I just kind of leave eye auto on and come back at autofocus, manual focus, uh, on or off. You can actually turn that on if you want to go backwards and uh, use them uh, with AF with manual focus, meaning you autofocus and then you can adjust with manual focus. Manual focus assist, I can select peaking, I also can set standard and I can also when I'm in the optical mode have a split image as well as a monochromatic. It's pretty cool. A lot of choices and you can see you can set the peaking levels and the colors and so forth here. Uh, you got a focus check on if you want it, instant AF, depth of field. I'm doing pixel or 
you can do film format basis. So let's go back to film format basis. Release priority, we all know what that is. Do we want to release priority based upon whether it's in focus or just release period? What this means is it won't release the shutter to take a picture until it's uh, auto. In this case, at release, it'll just release period no matter whether it's in focus or not. And let's go down to the third menu. Third menu is touchscreen mode, which is kind of nice. I have it turned off now. And corrected AF frame, which will correct the autofocus frame uh, as you're working in manual focus. Um, I'm going to run through these quick. We have sports finder mode. This gives you a little bit wider of a, uh, a view so you can see what's coming into the screen. Self timer's off, self timer setting. You can set all these. Interval time shooting, great for that. AE bracketing, uh, auto exposure bracketing setting, and you have a bunch of different ways you can set that on the steps, uh, whether you want it continuous, whether you want the zero, plus, and negative. So you have a lot of varieties there to work with. Film simulation bracketing, this is kind of cool. So if you actually set it up for bracketing, uh, you can decide what film versions you want. So you could have a Velvia, um, a Chrome, um, an Intera. So you can actually uh, film bracket and get five versions of uh, the images that you're looking for. Uh, multiple exposure control, oh, this is kind of nice. You can do multiple exposures with this camera. So you can actually shoot one picture and then kind of hold and find something else, frame it and do another one. So you have additive, average, bright or dark. So you have a couple selections that you can do with that. We have mechanical shutter, an electronic shutter, or a mechanical and electronic shutter that you can choose. Very ki kind of nice thing to have. Flicker reduction is off, but if you're working in environments where uh, the electricity is different cycles, this will help keep the flicker reduction in the electronic viewfinder uh, controllable. ISO settings, very nice feature here is you can actually set three different ISO settings. So if you want to work in this case from ISO 160 to 12,800 with a minimum shutter speed of a 60 if you can, or depending on how you're shooting, <clears throat> we can go to this which is now ISO 160 with a 3200 max at a 60th of a second. So uh, easy to switch based upon the kind of er where you're shooting with. A conversion lens off or on is when you screw a, a, a lens on to give you a wider angle. Uh, neutral density filter, nice to have a neutral density filter built in when you need it. So that's a nice little feature with this camera. And then wireless communication, you can communicate with your uh, cell phone and see the pictures and shoot and com remotely control your camera. We have flash mode, we have movie mode. I'm not going to concentrate on the movie mode other than to kind of run through the menus for you and you can see what they are. You can actually set a film simulation mode in, in the movie mode, that's fun to have. White balance you can set uh, manual, you have dynamic range, you have a tone curve, uh, you can set the color biases here if you want. So it, it's got four screens. So the video side of things has gotten a lot more advanced, uh, but remember it's not a zoom lens, so you'd be working with a fixed lens kind of thing. But it's nice to know, once again, if I'm photographing out at a family event and there's a birthday party and I wanna catch a couple minutes of video that I have that control to do, uh, do so with. And then we have our typical I call it the wrench menu, but this gives us user settings. This is where we would format our cards, set the date and time, uh, go through a number of different areas along those lines. Uh, sound setup allows us to set the volumes for what we would like and playback volumes for the video. As you can see, I have it doing a click. You set the shutter sound. Screen setup allows us to set the screens up differently. We have electronic viewfinder. I have it on auto, but I can also set it to manually uh, work with the brightness. Uh, electronic viewfinder color. If you find that the color is going one way or another, you can recompensate for that. Electronic viewfinder color adjustment, red and blue and so forth. So you've got a couple different choices here to work with. Auto rotate on playback, I have off, but you can actually set it so that the playback rotates when you turn the screen vertically or horizontal. I have my scale set to feet. Optical viewfinder image display the full. You can also set it to small window if you'd like. And display custom settings. Um, this is where you can decide what goes in to the display. So 
If I want the framing guidelines on, I can just push that button. If I want the level turned on, I can push that button. So you have the ability to decide how much information you want to show in that display at all times. And you can change the display so it's a clean viewfinder or showing data by using the display uh, back button down there. And last but not least is um, large indicators uh, showing things bigger so if you're having trouble with your eyesight and so forth large indicator mode large indicator for display settings and information and contrast adjustment if you want to make some of those adjustments and tells you how to do that you know, most people want to touch this so that gives you kind of like the rundown the camera is very very simple 